weekend with Leody TV. We're at the Smart Energy Summit, Parks Associate Smart Energy Summit, and we're with Greg Ennis of the Wi-Fi Alliance. So, Greg, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Wi-Fi Alliance? Sure. Uh, well, the Wi-Fi Alliance has been going for over 10 years now. Uh, we started with our first certifications of Wi-Fi devices back in 2000, and it's been expanding ever since. It's a, a, a industry trade association. We've got over 400 member companies now. Um, and we do a variety of different things, but uh, the Wi-Fi certifications is the main thing that we're known for. And of course, we're very active in the in the smart grid and smart energy space because that's a, a big application for Wi-Fi. Well, yeah, why don't you expand on that a little bit on what you're doing here in terms of smart energy and, uh, and where it's going. So, well, um, you know, Wi-Fi is uh, essentially ubiquitous now. Right. I mean, there were over 750 million uh, shipments of Wi-Fi devices uh, just in 2010, I think there's been over a billion shipments uh, cumulatively since since the beginning, and so it's continuing to expand. I mean, we we certified nearly 2,500 devices last year, um, and you know that just reflects the increasing diversity of implementations of Wi-Fi into all sorts of different kinds of devices. It's now not just for for you know laptops and and access points but you know you're seeing it in your smartphones and iPads and television sets and all these other types of consumer electronics devices so you know the the implication of that for smart energy applications is that it it um, well number one is that Wi-Fi is essentially the the default home area network already within mm -hmm. uh, within US homes um, but then also just because it can support all these other kinds of devices it really op opens up opportunities in the in the smart energy applications um, to to tie these devices into the the consumers uh, smart energy uh, monitoring and usage and and also for the utilities so where will Wi-Fi fit in with some of the other connectivity uh, technologies that are out there for you know the smart energy or smart home type of uh, technology so Wi-Fi will be one of the technologies, but I think everybody in the industry recognizes that this is a huge market and it's kind of a, a complicated technical environment and there's opportunities for all sorts of technologies to be playing a role. And I think we all uh, anticipate that there's going to be mixed environments where you know homes may actually incorporate multiple of these technologies. But there's a tremendous amount of collaboration that's going on right now within the whole uh, smart grid world, a lot of it's being driven by the government's um, you know, smart grid interoperability panel, the SGIP work, that's bringing all the different um, technology players together to make sure that all this stuff uh, works, uh, works well together for the consumers. And uh, I mean, one good example of the type of collaboration work that's going on now is the, the uh, collaborative work that the Wi-Fi Alliance is doing with the Zigbee Alliance right now to make sure that Smart Energy Profile 2.0 works, well, actually not just over Wi-Fi or Zigbee, but actually over, uh, over other technologies as well. So, I mean, that's a good example of the kind of collaboration I think we're seeing uh, throughout the, the, uh, the industry um, in, the, in the smart energy world, and, and we, we expect that this will end up benefiting the consumers. Well, so in 2011, what do you see, you know, kind of happening with Wi-Fi to kind of help this process along, you know, in addition to the collaboration? Yeah, so, um, yeah, of course, the, the SEP 2.0 implementations that we would expect to be seeing um, over Wi-Fi within 2011, that, that will be a major thing. But then in addition, there's a, there's a, um, there's a, a new uh, development that actually it's a, it's a new program that the Wi-Fi Alliance launched just this past October called Wi-Fi Direct which is, it's a new way of using Wi-Fi. It's a peer-to-peer -peer technology based on Wi-Fi. Um, so it allows one device to communicate directly with another device without needing to be connected to the internet, without needing to be connected to a hotspot or to an access point. And um, already we have um, a, a lot of certifications that have been done for, for this. And what's the, you know, this will be used for things like, uh, you know, direct sharing of video between devices and things like that. But I think it will uh, potentially have interesting implications for smart energy applications because it, it kind of becomes another tool in the toolbox for utilities, say, as they uh, work through their, their planning process on how they're going to, to utilize Wi-Fi within the home. You know, it, it opens up the possibility of a, you know, even a, a utility-specific Wi-Fi network within the home that's essentially in parallel to the, to the user's own network. So that's, that's another thing to, to look for in 2011. Um, but I'd say one of the main um, 
you know, one of the main things that's going to happen in 2011 is just the continuing acceleration of Wi-Fi's present uh, uh, penetration within all sorts of new devices, and you know, the just the the increased penetration into homes, and that's that's really going to have uh, implications for for smart energy as well. Yeah, I guess the more connected you are, the more you can do with saving energy. That's right, and and we want to make it um, consumer friendly. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, you know, that means taking these devices that the consumers already have and tying them into their o overall energy management uh, system. So things like iPads and their smartphones and their televisions. You know, Wi-Fi is being incorporated into television sets these days. Not for smart energy applications, it's for, you know, supporting the multimedia. But um, we can take advantage of that now for smart energy applications to uh, allow that to be an in-home display, for example, for the, for the consumer. So that's, that's uh, you know, one of the benefits that Wi-Fi brings here. Do you see Wi-Fi getting down to the sensor level, you know, down to like uh, window sensors and that sort of thing? Yeah, certainly. Um, there's a, a lot of developments that are going on within the, the chipset manufacturers in the Wi-Fi industry to develop um, low cost, low complexity, low power consumption versions of Wi-Fi chips that will be interoperable with all the, the, um, the other Wi-Fi chips that are used in more high performance applications, but they will be targeted at things like you know, gas meters that are outside or, um, or uh, sensors and, mm -hmm. and other types of devices that require that kind of uh, low power uh, type of application. Type. That's right, right. So, and it sounds like the way it's evolving too, it almost ends up being kind of a mesh network type of approach, uh, or at least some sort of way to extend the network. Well, Wi-Fi has um, whole home coverage, and especially with um, the most recent generation of Wi-Fi, which is 802.11n. Um, and so, you know, that, that Wi-Fi natively can support the types of distances that we're going to require in order to, to go out and communicate with that pool pump out in the yard mm -hmm. um, and, and that kind of application. So uh, that's, that's one of the things that Wi-Fi kind of brings to the party is its inherent um, long range, yes. Well, Greg, I appreciate your time okay, and thank very you very good. much for being thank with you. us.